absolute birler of a game. An absolute joy to see. Four splendid tries. A great fight back by Wales in the second half. But Ireland have run out winners by 29 points to 23. Good afternoon. Yes, a perler of a game perhaps for the uncommitted Scotsman, but for Wales and Welsh followers, it was woe once more at Wembley. And the euphoria that greeted Graham Henry's first game in charge back in the autumn against the world champion South Africa is fading fast. Except for one inspired period in the second half, they were today outplayed again uh, by a committed Irish side, and uh, they maintain a remarkable sequence in this fixture against Wales. It was their fourth victory in the past five seasons, and incredibly, they still haven't lost away against Wales since 1983. We'll be looking back at the most important moments during the course of Wales on Saturday uh, today and we'll be seeking the opinion of JJ Williams, the former British Lions wing, and Gwyn Jones also, the former Welsh captain. But in the meantime, we go back to the studio in Cardiff for a roundup of today's events with Nicky Piper. Thanks, Hugh. Yes, Wembley, the place to be for all Welsh rugby fans today. We won't be away for too long, though. But in the meantime, let's catch up with all the other day's sporting headlines. Disappointment in the end for Wrexham. A second-half equaliser cost Brian Flynn's men their first home win in three months. No such luck for the Swans, though. A Jason Smith goal isn't enough to save them from defeat at bottom place Scarborough. And their cup dreams behind them, Barrytown resumed the defence of their league title against Total Network Solutions. So we've got lots of action and reports from all of the top games happening across Wales. And we will be crossing back and forth to Wembley for highlights of the big match and post-match interviews. But first, let's catch up with all of today's football results from Alistair Meikle. Starting with the League of Wales, Cadarvon Town 2, Avonlido 0. Connors Key Nomads 1, Intercabletel 2, Rill 1, Bangor City 2. Barry Town and Total Network Solutions FC, Conway United and Cumbran Town, highlights of both these matches coming up later in the programme. Dr Martin's League Premier Division, Rothwell Town 4, Merthyr Tidville 0. Midland Division, Newport AFC 1, Bedworth United 0. And in the Unibond League Premier Division, Worksop Town 1, Colwyn Bay 2. Thanks, Alistair. Turning to the Nationwide League, and Cardiff City slipped up at Ninian Park last night, dropping two vital points to promotion rivals Halifax Town. So that left Swansea and Wrexham to play today. The Swans have lost only one of their last 13 league matches and are moving steadily up the table. Their opponents, Scarborough, are bottom. But we'll start at the race course where York City were the visitors. The Minster men have been struggling lately, so could a resurgent Wrexham gain another three points today? The New England management were here at the race course this afternoon. Not Kevin Keegan, silly, but his right-hand man, his eyes and ears, and no disrespect to the other 20-odd players on show, but little doubt he was watching York's England B international Richard Creswell. Don't expect him to get a surprise call-up against Poland, though he did look a quality player on this stage and was instrumental in denying Wrexham their first league win at home in almost three months. His through ball set up Alan Poughton's second-half equaliser. Wrexham took the lead at the start of a 10-minute purple patch in the first half. Jake Edwards and defender Neil Thompson getting to the ball at the same time on the edge of the area, and it flew over the keeper. Edwards' first goal at the race course on his first start here. Wrexham won, York won. The fact that rock-bottom Scarborough rocked Swansea on the pitch was a good story in itself, but there was an even better story off the pitch this afternoon. Colin Addison was watching the match. He'll decide on Monday whether to take the vacant manager's job here at Scarborough. He said he's very interested. The home side surged to a two-goal lead with goals from Chris Tate after a Jason Smith mistake after 26 minutes. Then Darren Roberts finished off a superb move six minutes later. Smith made amends with a header just before half-time. Swansea were at better in the second half but couldn't force an equaliser. And this defeat is a blow to their promotion aspirations. Scarborough 2, Swansea 1. Well, that's a bad loss for Swansea, and we'll see how those results affected the nationwide tables. Plus, we've highlights from three games in the League of Wales coming up in around ten minutes or so. But let's hurry back over to Wembley and catch up with all the news from Wales against Ireland with Hugh Llewellyn Davis. Thank you, Nicky. Well, today was the second Saturday of the Championship this year, the Five Nations. And here at Wembley, it was the battle between the two sides who lost a fortnight ago, Ireland, narrowly against France and uh, Wales quite disappointingly up at Murrayfield against Scotland. So both teams, both coaches under pressure today. 
We'll join the game and look back at the highlights in the company of JJ Williams, who's with us here, and Bill McLaren. Scott Quinnell, thrown down there by Andrew Ward. Jenkins, the charge down by, and it could be a score here. A tremendous run all the way by Mags, Kevin Mags. David Humphreys was onto it first of all. The Irish are thrilled, so is Kevin Maggs, it's his third try for Ireland. This is about 12 yards outside the Irish 22, Miller going wide, runs into Jenkins, that's the whole idea, to suck in the Welsh backs. McGuinness with the high kick, Woods was up quickly, good bit of work there by Matthew Robinson, I mean, uh, to have even made ground over the gain line was a great effort there. Gibbs goes outside to Williams, that's halfway. Howley once again, Jenkins, Taylor going up to the Irish 10 metres line. Good driving by the Irish forwards here. Jenkins once again, Gibbs gets it out. Then it's Chuck Connell going, there's an overlap there. And uh, the flanker Williams was out there as well. There was a, a couple of men spare on that occasion. The last pass just didn't go to ground. Miller again with a pick up to McGuinness, there's a real chance here as O'Shea comes in. O'Shea kicking on, can he get the touch? It's a... but he may have been beaten to it. The referee has given the 22 dropout. A marvellous bit of covering back there by Duffy James. Barry Williams with the throw, Wyatt again shifting his position sensibly there. Barry Williams burrows in number two there. <laughs> Ireland and Wales thought the ball was somewhere else. Scott Gibbs come in. Craig Quinnell, very well tackled by Closey. Now the feed out there to O'Quinnigan. O'Quinnigan inside to Woods. Woods over the 22. Woods almost clear. Amazing how he kept his balance the first time. Now a chance there for Keith Wood. Keith Wood in at the post. It's a try. A crucial try, that one for Ireland. Peter Closey gets ready to hoist Patrick Jones, but he needn't have bothered because Jeremy Davidson drifted back with it. That, in fact, uh, that time was Eric Miller who took it. Wood again, thundering the... <laughs> All guns blazing, Keith Wood. Humphreys with the drop goal attempt. The referee raises his arms, and it's all Ireland at the moment. <laughs> Meanwhile... Can Wales force themselves back into the game? Wyatt takes it, Craig Quinnell goes and scores. That is absolutely perfect line-out play. Who would have believed it after their experiences of the first half? Duffy James on halfway. Still Wales, Howley. Gives it on to Jenkins, but man and ball for Jenkins. The man was Andrew Ward, the flank forward. Taylor goes. Craig Quinnell thumping, tackled by Cloisey. Marvellous rugby, this. The crowd are on their feet. What, a, what an episode of rugby football we're having. Jenkins going. That's Chris Wyatt. Another super tackle, that time by Niall Woods. And it's another good ball for Wales. Scott Gibbs going over halfway. Chased and tackled by Jonathan Bell. Howley. Howard and Robinson and a marvellous tackle that by Conor O'Shea of London Irish saved the day for Ireland. However, Wyatt once again, Jenkins, Gibbs, on there to Scott Quinnell. The Irish have looked after Scott Quinnell, Wood hacks it on. Very good pick-up by Taylor, Taylor drives to the Ireland 22. Howley feeds out, Jenkins, there's a real chance here for Wyatt. Wyatt back inside, and it's a lovely try for the fullback. Howarth the scorer, and how he deserves it. There again, you see, another super jump by Davidson. Humphreys, Bell, Mags coming in. Mags the try scorer. McGuinness. It's, was it going to be the drop goal again? Humphreys once more, the arm is raised, and Humphreys is having a day of days. 
Again, almost up to the Welsh, 22. Drive on by Paul Wallace. This was an important ball for Ireland to win. Conor O'Shea was in there as the scrum half. Down there goes Wood. Wales seem to have dived over there, and it'll be a penalty to Ireland. That This could well finish the game and seal it for the Irish. Well, I thought it was harsh refereeing by Scott Young then on Darren Morris. I thought that ball was out of that ruck there. Referee's whistle goes for the end of the match, and it's been an absolute burler of a game. But victory finally to Ireland. You heard JJ Williams, his voice with Bill McLaren. <laughs> He's joined us here now at Wembley, and Gwyn Jones, former Wales captain. Uh, JJ, what went wrong again? Well, again, the platform wasn't right. You know, I, I, I'm happier tonight than I was two weeks ago in Edinburgh. But again, you know, you can't, how naive we are to think we just have one line-out uh, player. And uh, you know, Chris Wyatt played well, but first half we couldn't win any line-up ball. All these talented three quarters. That's all we have to have is a platform. We knew about it for the game, and, and the game went exactly to the plan with Ireland dominating up front. Was it uh, a question of the same mistakes again? When no solid platform in that front five, and too many, uh, too many occasions when Wales lost the ball. Uh, when in possession and uh, going into contact. Definitely we did that again today and uh, I think it was a little bit worse today than it was even in Murrayfield. Um, we don't expect players like Craig Cornell to lose the ball in contact as often as they did today. Um, but I just thought that Ireland and Ferris were, were, were worthy victor victors today. Uh, they controlled us for an hour, they bossed us around the field and in the last 10 minutes when we came back to, into the game they just shut up shop, they kicked the ball in the corner and scrummaged us out of the game and in the end I think they were wholly deserved winners. Well, it's worth noting, perhaps, last year, Wales won two and lost two. They beat both Ireland and Scotland. Uh, and after that season, Kevin Bowering lost his position as Welsh coach. Well, this season, all the euphoria with Graham Henry, he came here from New Zealand, and everybody thought uh, that things were going well for Wales after losing narrowly against South Africa. But now Graham Henry has lost the two opening games in the championship against Ireland and Scotland. He spoke after the game with Graham Thomas. Graham, commiserations, but you must have felt when you got back to 26-23 that you were going to snatch it. Oh, it was a possibility. You know, we had some purple patches in the second half, but we didn't retain the ball often enough and long enough to really put it away. And then you, were, uh, you were, had Ireland under pressure in that last few minutes, and then another turnover with a knock-on. Perhaps that was really the story of the day. Yeah, there's too many turnovers. We lost the ball in the tackle. Uh, we gave away too many penalties at crucial scrums, things like that. So we didn't get any continuity in our game. We, we improved a lot as the game went on, which was pleasing. Uh, but we had a poor first half, really. You know, the guys wanted to play, I'm sure. But uh, we didn't really get any fluency into our game. Second half, we had some fluency, but couldn't retain the ball long enough and gave away those penalties. So um, at the end of the day, that means you get beaten. And the Irish played better than we did uh, for 80 minutes. Now, we had some good patches in the game, but overall, they were, they were the better side. You made a substitution when you brought on Garen Jenkins for Barry Williams. Did you feel perhaps that was the right decision all along, that you should have played Garen? Well, no, no. I think you've got to play, you know, you usually play two hookers in a game, and they're both very positive players. Garen made, a, made an impact when he came on, which um, substitutes have to do. And now perhaps you've got possibly the two most difficult games to come, France away and England back at Wembley. It's uphill again from here. Oh, it certainly is, but it's, it's, the team will pull together. You know, they'll, they'll pull together as a group of people and take on those challenges. And it's very important that they do that, and I'm sure they will. What are the lessons, Graham, from this game for the uh, French game in two weeks' time? Well, you know, I think we, we lost a bit of composure in the first half. We just went quite together mentally uh, to, to play fluent football. Uh, there shouldn't be any pressure against the French, should there, really? Like, we're out of the Five Nations, and so they won't have that on their heads. So some fluency, uh, ball control, obviously. Um, discipline, not give away so many penalties, that sort of thing. So we get some fluency out of the game, but it's, it's a big challenge for the group of guys involved here and for all of us. And um, challenges bring the best out of people. And do you think you can learn those lessons with these players, or, or might there be some changes? Well, I think there's a pretty positive group of players. You know, we're always you're always looking to um, make sure you get the best team on the field, and that's a continual search. Um, but we've got some very good players out there. You know. I think if they get some confidence and believe in themselves and get that fluency and all those things I've said before, uh, we'll get better. Graham, thanks very much. Pleasure. That's Graham Henry, Welsh coach. Gwyn Jones, former Welsh captain. Is it a matter of confidence? 
I think to a certain extent it is. I think that uh, when we were 26 6 down, I think the boys realised they had to do something and they put in a 15 minutes of, of brilliant rugby. The, but just, you know, we have to ask ourselves where was that for the rest of the game? The first half was very poor, um, too many mistakes, and um, let the Irish in, and that's all they need is chances uh, to put pressure on us. Would you agree with that, John? Yeah, confidence. They, they haven't got confidence. I mean, they can't uh, d develop enough phases of play. They can do it occasionally when they score the try, yeah, like they did in Scotland when Scott Gibbs scored that try. But Graham Henry spot on when he says that uh, they are making mistakes. And the coaches can't do much about that, apart from drum it into them and drum it into them. You can talk about technique with carrying the ball into tackles. But when the biggest people on the field, like the two, co two Cornell boys, drop the ball, then what can the coach do about that? And mm. they'll be disappointed because they are good players. And they shouldn't do that because they are playing high-level rugby week in, week out. So uh, Graham Henry is quite right. We've got a France now and uh, you know we've got nothing to lose we, we, we're not expecting to win but they could at least play some rugby and who knows what can happen I'm, yeah. I, I say I'm happier tonight than I was two weeks ago but we're still not a, a top uh, international team to compete on this world stage yet no if you're happier look at uh, John <laughs> there we are lovely a nice smile the other game today it's strange two internationals played on the same afternoon in the same city the other one today was played at Twickenham England uh, come into the championship for the first time and they were hosting Scotland Edward Bevan watched this game. Scotland haven't beaten England at Twickenham since 1983, but they came so close today and had Kenny Logan not missed three kickable penalties, Jim Telfer's men would have returned triumphant. Everyone sat back as England galloped into a 14 nil lead 19 minutes into the first half. Everyone that is but Scotland, who upset England's rhythm, especially up front, where some of the English forwards were made to look pedestrian. Scotland gained parity at the scrums and then line out their back row were invariably first to the breakdown. Final score, Twickenham, England 24, Scotland 21. So that's how the table looks at the moment. Four teams there with two points apiece. Scotland and Ireland have played twice. France and England have played one each. So two points there and sadly Wales right at the bottom. They've played two and lost both. We'll be back to discuss later at Wembley but in the meantime, back in the studio in Cardiff. Thank you, Nikki. Welcome back to Wembley. If you're there, not knowing the result, well, Ireland have beaten Wales 29 points to 23. JJ Williams, Gwyn Jones watched the game. JJ, that first half, it went wrong from the start again, didn't it? And Wales gave away once again a soft try, just as they did at Murrayfield a fortnight ago. Well, we knew we'd be up against it in the, uh, against this Irish pack, and it went to, to form. We couldn't get uh, a platform right. Our line at first half was a disaster, and then when Neil had that uh, kick charge down, you know, they, they give them soft points again. And we get this all the time. That we're always playing catch-up rugby. When will we learn? The players make so many mistakes in international rugby. Who? First thing you do, do is not make mistakes. You try and be creative, but cut out all the mistakes on Wales make too many mistakes all the time. Yeah, we can't, we can't expect to have a, any sort of a pattern in the game when we, when we haven't got possession. The most important thing when you're playing rugby is to first win the ball and then to keep it. And we, are struggling, <laughs> we struggled in both those areas today, so we're always up against it. Yeah. We'll have a look at the four tries scored today. Mm. Two tries apiece, incidentally, but uh, David Humphreys had those 19 points for Ireland with a boot. And here's the first one, JJ. Yeah, the charge down. You see, if Neil was going to kick it, and he was going to kick it, he planned to do it. Why wasn't he standing deeper? It's easy to defend against. Look, no, no blind side wing there. However, standing in the line. So again, it's a, it's a basic mistake which top quality international outside halves shouldn't make. This is the second try, I think, and uh, it came from again a, a Welsh error, losing a ball in round 22. And it's a good run, lovely switch on the outside by the Irish, and a good run by Nile Woods. And then uh, you see Keith Wood come on a short on the left, and a lovely drop of the left shoulder, and he beats Gibbs and scores under the post. But well, that's the value of the guy, he's a great player. Yeah. But we're talking about the line out, and this was just a, an ordinary rock solid line. They're not walking into the line, they're in the line, at throw in the back, and there's Craig Fennell. Now, we, that's a, just a basic peel around the back, nothing new about that. Why weren't we doing that earlier in the game? We're well into the second half before we actually have a solid line out. And the second try again for Wales came from that line out. <laughs> yes, it was a good uh, one, one, one which we do well under Henry is the quick line out. It's designed for uh, Neil Jenkins to act as scrum half, but there he is, the pest again, uh, <laughs> Woods and in amongst it. And they're marked it as exceptionally well here. Tidies a poor possession, drives it forward, and a, a lovely pass by Neil Jenkins. Misses out two of our players, and there's Wyatt again, so influential in the tries Wales are scoring. Up in Scotland, give the final pass, and again today. 
They were then back within six points. A penalty came in front of the post and 12 minutes to go. Wales kicked for goal to get back within three. But the momentum seemed to disappear with that, uh, Gwyn. And we never, Wales never got back within touching distance again. It's ironic that uh, a, a penalty that we elected to kick today, and, and absolutely the right reasons for so for doing so, uh, changed the game. Uh, momentum shifted after that. We couldn't get back in the game. We couldn't get our hands on the ball. And it's ironic that a similar decision uh, two weeks ago went against us. Yeah. JJ, we're looking forward to Paris now. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now, that's a little daunting, isn't it? Games are getting progressively harder this year, we said, and we've yeah. lost the opening too. Now, can Graham Henry change? Are the better players at Well, all? Graham Henry's not used to losing in Paris. It's just a new thing for him. Yeah? And you said <laughs> Wales are. Yeah, yeah but, but he is not, and that is the deciding thing. He won't say, well, we haven't won, we haven't lost, there, won there for 25 years. So he would be positive about it. Now, coaches in the past would go there for, you know, let's hold them back. Let's see if we can hold them for 50 points. He will now say, look, this is we cut out the, uh, the mistakes and we can beat people. That's how he thinks. That's how he is groomed through his New Zealand background, so let's hope that he can wave the magic wand. I asked you, are you going to change the team, JJ? The te I think <laughs> the only changes you can make, we haven't got a lot of choices, I think I might start with Gavin Jenkins and uh, Barry Williams coming on second half, the only change for me. Gwen, would you change that side? Mm. Um, there's an argument for Gavin Jenkins, definitely, because he does show it up for possession, but um, I mean, essentially, when we do play well, we look very good, but you know, it's a 15-man commitment, and they've all got to take responsibility for today's performance. Well, there we are, Gwen and John, thanks for your company here. Wembley, fifth time for Wales to host a side here, and they've lost for the fourth time. Well, it'll be Paris in a fortnight, but you can look back over today. Again, tomorrow in Scrum 5. Scrum 5 on BBC Two in Wales at 11.50, 10 to 12. But from Wembley, again, it's disappointment. Ireland have beaten Wales. Good night.